This the link up. This the link up. This the link up. Welcome to the link up. This the link up. This the link up. This the link up. Welcome to the link up. Oh. Yes, yes. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Linko Podcast with your hosts, Mr. King and Kana. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, everybody. And, you know, this is another week in between. So this week, there's no um, special guest or anything. This is just the two of us. And, you know, we're just going to have a conversation, which is what we always do. But, yeah, it's, it's just going to be us two. Bye, but crap. I can't, I can't forget what I was going to say just now. Something along the lines of what I was going to say. But anyway. This whole I I I know just to start off everything. Right? Mm-hmm. This whole thing that blowing up on social media. So like, what well, maybe a week or two weeks ago, it was um the BET Awards, right? Mm-hmm. I don't remember the exact date, so I can't yeah, confirm. Somewhere yeah, around, somewhere around, either a week or two, something like that. Somewhere yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Before before the show and thing, it was like, yeah, um, Eminem go and drop a freestyle. Mm-hmm. Cool. No problem. Nobody ain't really heard nothing from Eminem in a while. Everybody hyped. Well, I was a little bit hyped. And I mean, I ain't really that much of a music head and stuff like that. Or that big of an Eminem fan. I mean, mm-hmm. I like some of his tunes and them kind of ones. But I was a little excited too to hear, you know, what good. What is man going to talk about? Mm-hmm. Bam, no. I wasn't really just going to stay up to really watch that live. So I watched it the next day. I went to go watch Eminem thing specifically. I didn't really care about nothing else. Really and truly, by I... I I don't see the hype. I, I you're not alone in this one because I, honestly, I don't. It's like the man to me, the man even in rap jet. Like I could, it to me that felt like a real freestyle because it and and actually no, I take that back. That didn't really feel like a real freestyle. Really, the man would literally just talk <laughs> angrily. Like he was Eminem without a beat. I would disagree because, I mean, Eminem has done this on multiple occasions. Like, just when everybody else used a beat and stuff like that, I think he was done on one of the previous ciphers that he did. He did the same thing, basically, or at least it was a little different because everybody else did on beat and he chose to go a cappella and thing. And many times when he is spit in different places, he chose to go a cappella. So I feel like that in particular is not something that's out of Eminem's character. Me being okay, a, well, I was, yeah, I was going to say, maybe because you're more of a fan, you yeah, know these like, things a little bit more. Me, me, being, me being a big fan and, like, I mean, yo, regardless, even, I'm going to follow everything. I mean, like, I'm going to at least check out whatever Eminem's job just because, like, I bought into the brand like from way too young and I just you know I, I've been a fan and I'll continue to even though honestly as an Eminem fan I haven't been excited necessarily about anything Eminem has done in quite some time like the last thing was March Matters LP2 it had like a few moments that I was like you know this is cool the fact that he did a, a song that was like part two to his most legendary song one of his most legendary songs Stan mm-hmm. like the fact that he continued the story from the perspective of Stan's little yeah, brother see, that was like barely mentioned I think that was I one moment in that. particular that I felt like that was just I feel like that just felt like fan service to Eminem fans in particular like everybody knows Stan that's like one of his iconic songs so like yeah, but other than that, really, there's not much Eminem has done that has really impressed me or had me like, wow, to me, Eminem is, like, from the recovery album, I feel like, okay, I kind of tuned out from Eminem. Relapse was but, I mean, okay. I heard, I see videos and stuff like that, the man bad. So, like, I, I yeah, really, Eminem, I was... Like, I did, and his talent level, his technical rapping ability was never in question. But, 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 but exactly, that's why I feel, like, a bit disappointed because mm. what... There was still there was still there was still hardly rhyme even Jeff. Nah, you can't say that. There was still a lot of like I, I, I rewatched it. I, even though I felt, listen, I I'm not trying to defend and say that it was mind blowing or none like that performance from Eminem, but because he's Eminem, I feel like there's a different standard that we hold him to than any other artist and thing like that. If of any, course. if most people had did because it's Eminem, uh, spit some of the bars and thing that he did, it would be like, yeah, man, that was a pretty decent thing. But I feel like. Um, to this self, I saw a reaction video from Redman where he was explaining his opinion on it and kind of defending Eminem, saying like, "Yeah, he felt as though it was a statement and it was a purposeful, it was kind of purposeful and with intent. Like every time he speaks and thing is some is with intent and okay, is cool. meaningful and more from the perspective of like, okay, he's a white person and using his platform like he didn't have to do it. He could have just go up there and you know spit bars and stuff like that and." 
But okay, that was a possibility, like most other rappers. But he chose to, you know, make a moment that take a stand and, you know, say something a little more profound. Even though, like it wasn't, really, I guess, not necessarily profound, but I guess more, um, a political statement. Make a political statement, basically. Okay, cool. If you want, let's let's go there then. If you want to talk about that, the only reason anybody even talking about it is because it's Eminem. Yeah, this man he, has, say, he has he, a platform he, he, he that... He ain't say nothing new or nothing we ain't hear before or none of, nothing even other white people ain't already say. Listen, I agree. I agree with I I agree. I, I personally agree with that thing because that was one of my um, first points of... Uh, one of the first reasons why I wasn't necessarily impressed with it got to me was like the last thing he dropped, I forget what it was. It was like a seven minute track or something like that. He was just spitting a bunch of bars and thing. And he touched on Trump and thing. Uh, like Trump was a big portion of that. I don't remember exactly how much bars or how much time he spent on Trump. But I remember like Trump was one of the kind of standout points of that whole thing that he dropped. I don't remember the name of it because I really didn't spend that much time. It was like mm-hmm. seven minutes of bars. It's not something that has that much replay value, something that you really want to just sit and bump to kind of beat itself was there wasn't really that much of a beat anyway so it was kind of almost acapella with just like a very minimalistic beat in the background there so it wasn't something you want to listen to more but my thing was like you just finished talking about trump in the last thing you dropped now the next thing we hear from you rapping again you on trump again i'm like okay is there nothing else out there that inspires you i mean supposedly you come in and dropping an album so but you see that that no hopefully the album isn't all about trump and stuff like where, that that's where my whole thought process had do a, like a 180 because i was like okay cool he dropped an album November. When I find out, I was like, all right, cool. He dropped an album November. He what do you mean? Did the release date was already? Yeah, yeah, true. yeah. And I well, wasn't even paying okay, that much okay. attention. Let me like, not, I'm like, whatever it drop, I listen not, to it. But I mean, I... Let I, me not say that I don't know for sure. It was, there's no exact date, but okay, it was rumored okay. to be that it was dropping November. And then some sometime there, I read an article that it was confirmed that it was you know, sometime in November. True, true, true. So I was like, all right, cool. He got he know he he album releasing in November so then cool he gonna he gonna drop a freestyle and and a big award show the cipher is a whole big something is well known well a looked at stuff. yeah yeah but yeah that's what it is and he gonna say something what everybody going to agree with and everybody going to hype and everybody going to, to be like yeah boy yeah because yeah. M- it's Eminem and it's just like <laughs> okay and and that that's basically what happened like. At least looking at the wave and stuff, most people's reactions towards it. That's basically what happened. Exactly what you say, but I I guess I just don't understand it. Cause it's like okay, cool. Like number one, I was disappointed because I I really expected lyricism from Eminem, and it sounded like this man was listening to too much Uzi Vert or fucking Ugly God and them man. <laughs> because that what a fuck, Jad. <laughs> or the man, no, or the man must have been. But he, I I don't know. But and it, honestly, it wasn't what I was expecting. Maybe maybe I hold him up to a hell because of his past thing or I I don't know but this is a kind this a kind of side tension but I feel like it's just something that I was thinking about just in general like my feelings towards rap in general <coughs> like similarly to like the kind of standard that I feel like we hold Eminem to or at least a lot of people fans of rap music or whatever that people hold Eminem to is like the level of lyricism and just the type of music, the qu- level of quality in his music that he's brought out. Like, you can't say Eminem is not one of the best rappers, like, alive still to this day. I mean, just the body of work that he's left behind and stuff. And based on that, it's like, you see him in this way and kind of just put, like, everything he has to drop has to measure up to what he's done in the past kind of way. You and it's like... I mean, yeah, kind of. At least in general. But... That but you but you know what that's why I'm not judging the album. Mm. So that's why I ain't gonna say like, but yeah, if this is what this man thinking, it, you know, I ain't even gonna bother listening to the album. I'm like, all right, cool. Because I'm gonna wait till it drop and then be like, all right, let me listen to it and then from there I could be like, all right. Like for me, sometimes I feel like Eminem people like that kind of set the bar as to like what I qualify rap as. Like, is to me is like but it, not it, that it, freestyle. It, yeah, not 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 necessarily that, but there's very few songs that could rival the storytelling of Stan. Like that was four verses of 
creativity just, just. yeah it was sick but you know maybe because Eminem ain't really going through a dark time that, that, that's I mean we all know that's what it was I mean <laughs> since like re- relapse <laughs> recovery that, that was that around fun. the time that he stopped being on drugs and I mean I commend him on his sobriety or whatever he been 10 years sober however how much it must be now by now but like I commend him on that but mm-hmm. like that's appreciating Marshall Matters the human behind Eminem and all of that but as a fan of Eminem the rapper and stuff every basically any fan of Eminem will tell you that they're a fan of the Slim Shady stuff what he was doing way back then when he was talking about high kids do you like violence want to see me stick nine inch nails to each one of my eyelids maybe not that song in particular but yeah. like that era yeah, of yeah, Eminem yeah, yeah, I, understand like, what you mean. I mean his palms are sweaty knees weak arms are heavy yeah, there's vomit I mean, on his sweater no, already no, mom's spaghetti he's nervous I, I mean it, it, but that's the thing you, you still holding him to that I mean them is big tunes them tunes you still play today mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's but, like and then he comes with this and it's like but I mean I mean that to me to me is a slap in the face but like the kind of tangent or uh, slight tangent after that I feel like it's just something that I've been thinking is similarly to Eminem I feel like Kendrick kind of ruined albums for me in the sense that the same to me, I, I compare every album, every rap album that I listen to, to Good Kid, Mad City, or to Bimbo Butterfly. Because in my opinion, since I've been paying attention to music, it's like there hasn't, there's been no album that has been as good as those two albums, those two rap albums in particular. Like in recent history, there's been some great, great rap, great rap yeah. albums in like the history of rap and all of it. But I mean, mm. in recent history, there's been Kendrick at the bar, and it's like I feel. I listen to every every new project. I listen to it expecting or hoping that it kind of exceeds my expectation or does something new, does something unexpected that kind of blows my mind or it changes my perspective or like level of appreciation for music the way Good Kid Mad City and um, to, to Bimple Butterfly did because I felt like that's why I just could not enjoy Damn because it was like you can't come off of... Um, Good Kid Mad City to then do to Pimple Butterfly and then do Damn and then it's like the level of conceptuality and thought and stuff like that that was involved in Good Kid Mad City the level of cohesiveness and stuff that those two projects had is like I as a fan of that Kendrick you you just fucking up yourself by because Like because you're just diving so deep in it, you really enjoy it. You're not enjoying the music cause it's just because just like, like you're the, the same. It, you're, you're going to is, never, you're going is, to never enjoy anything else no, that comes no, after because you always. Go, I feel, but that's, that's why you're fucking up yourself. Like, you can't, that you can't, you won't enjoy music properly no more. Then I do like, like the amount of albums I listen to. I do enjoy them, but then it's like it's just okay. I mean, it's not. It's just, I feel like that was an excellent album. And almost every other album that I've heard, there's not been many that was like that level that I felt like there was that level of thought behind it that really felt like it was a work of art type or something that was like more than just an album. Complex. Nah, you, you, you sound like good complex. Kid, good Kid Mad City, dog. It, I, I feel like there's never been one album that detailed life of somebody like a kid in Compton going through the struggles and just the different elements and the different aspects and stuff that he tackled that felt like such a cohesive story that each song was like a different part of that one story type of thing like that level of thought that went into an album like I feel like there's not been any album and then like what what he was doing on To Bimbo Butterfly for example that was something that was unheard of to me like I never heard like what he was doing on the end of certain songs where I had the poem that he would start I forget how it would start, but um, you would just hear it, and then he did it on maybe like three or four songs or whatever. You would hear the poem start, and then at whatever word it stopped or the sentence that it stopped, the next song that was following was kind of exploring that theme or that topic of the last thing he said. So it kind of created this, it weave all the, a lot mm-hmm. of the songs together with this one poem, and it just stopping at different places and continuing from that thought. And like then at the end, he kind of tell the whole um the whole poem play out and stuff like that and he had the interview with Parkway was like he uh, he found some old hidden un- like unheard of Park interview that nobody else heard of and like use his voice and pretend like made it sound like he was having a conversation with Park and stuff like that that level of thought and stuff going into an album ain't nobody doing stuff like that in hip hop to this in this day no so it just 
you can't come on for those types of hip hop albums and even the complete the sound the direction that he went with the sound of to bimbo butterfly like bringing that jazz back that jazzy feel and stuff back to hip hop at the time when I heard I I was like what is this cuz that was the first song that he had released from to bimbo butterfly and I didn't like it because he just dropped to bimbo um good kid mad city which was a lot more modern sounding type of things and then he just take it complete back with a song but I love myself and I was like it's okay but then when you hear it in the context of the whole album and shit it was like yo it makes sense it fits perfectly with the other songs and the <clears throat> topics that he was tackling and stuff the performances that he was doing around um to bimbo butterfly is like yeah i i man I, is on a different level though. i i really delve into it like that so i mean, i i <clears throat> can't really con- confirm nor deny tracks like <laughs> the black of the berry the performance that he did i forget whether it was the grammys performance he did with him i had like a huge um, um a picture of africa and then he had like compton going across the middle and stuff and it was like we had the chains like look, looking looking the prisoner costumes yeah, and the yeah, fire yeah, and yeah, thing yeah, like that yeah. performance was like Yo, the man was doing amazing shit in that era, and then he dropped down and he like featuring with Rihanna and shit. And I'm like, but what, but what okay, fuck? why not? Why not Rihanna? Why, what? To me, the, the the like when that kind of stuff signaled the decline for certain artists that I particularly like <laughs> because it was the same thing for Eminem, dog. The up. album that he started doing features with Lil Wayne and and Rihanna and stuff like that. I was like, but no I, love. Well, <clears throat> oh, why no? Why, we, why we, 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 this, the sample, like no love, and yeah, love the way you lie. And I'm like, but I, I personally had that song. There was the love. most mainstream sounding Eminem stuff that Eminem ever made in his life. And I was like, well, what is this? What happened to clean up my closet? What happened to Kim and Stan? My, and where this dude went? I understand, but I don't care. I, <laughs> I mean, you, know, you see? <laughs> But you know, Listen, but no, as a fan, I want the music no, if you really, that sounds like that. If you I, really like, think about it, right? Most <laughs> the, some of the best work from like the most talented artists come when trouble it's going through yeah. time. Yeah, that, that's from, usually like, how it goes. And as soon as they're happy and they sort their life out and shit, like, yeah, there's like, no way to pull from. There's no struggle. There's nothing yo, to influence one, and drive the music like that no more. One of the classic breakup fucking um, tracks, Usher. Let it the whole let it burn. Yeah, album. the album confessions album. Con- his let it best burn. work. Confess- his Yo, best work. Maybe going to crap down. That, that's when shit. I that mean, <laughs> well, what was the one song that you remember from Keisha Cole? If you, like she had a couple of hits, but what was the one song that you remember? Um, um, um. Love. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I can't tell you that was some breakup shit that inspired that song as well. It's like. There's, I mean, from the Amy Winehouses and stuff like that, there's been many but, tragic cases and stuff. But, if you listen to certain Linkin Park lyrics and stuff, listen okay, to yeah. what those songs are about and stuff yeah, like but that. that. No, 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 I no, mean, no, 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 but, but, but rest that, in that, peace that to these people. That's what a I different mean? genre, that, that, That's a little bit of a different yeah, genre. Yeah, but still, into. like... Because then, then you're going into rock and you're going Yeah, but that. still, many of these people been... Uh, it, it, like, lots of these people... um abuse drugs and are very depressed and dealing with all kind of personal stuff being in the spotlight and thing that it, it's just a common thing in celebrities and stuff like recently i just watched the chris brown documentary that they put on netflix and thing i tried to watch it and like it, it was interesting i, I fall asleep i ain't even gonna lie to you i'd watch the whole thing man it, it was I it was i'm gonna give it another try i, I felt like it, it it i felt like what it was trying to do i kind of disappointed in myself because i feel like i fell for what exactly they was trying to do which i know was the purpose of the documentary is basically to like try to humanize chris and kind of um make you sympathize with his story and stuff like that but i feel like the storytelling of it though was like really i felt like it was pretty good like all the, the different insights from the different people in his life and stuff that he told yeah no I mean, yo, it's, <clears throat> it's cool and whatnot but i guess me personally because i i i, I don't know like maybe i disconnected from chris brown I, d- I don't i'm not a, but a real fan of chris brown and none but oh, to me just from the well, music aspect of like no, i just you, curious but as but a music documentary okay. i want to see what it's about i don't know well, why i say that is because at one point i was watching it and i was just like yo who gives a shit <laughs> 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 like, well, once i kept myself talking Team like breezy. that it, 
it, it's like I right. them people who will be like yeah, but the who, millions and millions of Chris Brown fans I, out there probably probably yeah but I mean like personally I really don't it, okay in other words in other words I don't give a shit <laughs> understandable it, it's so completely like, why, understandable I was just like alright cool you know I, I think no I like I, and I fall asleep and then it end up changing to something no, I like eventually I'm gonna check out the Lady Gaga one cause I saw that they, okay, added, nope. they added a Lady Gaga documentary too far for like, me. <clears> yeah way, but I mean way too much for me for me like well, when let me I, know let me know how it is like when I was doing my minor I had to like for homework I had to watch a documentary on this band 30 Seconds from Mars people I had never heard of before having to do that minor and shit and it was like really interesting and stuff seeing it because it was going through it was really about the business side of the music industry so detailing like how they was in debt from from the first album while he was making the second album i forget how much money there was in debt. it was 13 uh i forget crazy amount of money there was in debt basically because they still had to recoup before they could uh, um produce his next album and just they was going through all they was being sued by the company the label that it was on and stuff during the produce during working on the second album just showing the whole process and thing how the manager working with the band to keep them on track of like listening to certain songs, seeing like one missing, what still needs to be added and all that. So like, it was really interesting. And <clears throat> it's something that I originally thought that based on the genre and the unfamiliarity with these people and stuff, I'm like, mm-hmm. I was basically thankful for be having to be forced to watch it basically. But yeah, I, I, I really <laughs> understand what you mean, but I still don't watch it. Really got it. True, I, I true. really don't care about it. Got it that much to, to, Understandable, understandable. But I mean, back, I mean, closing off the whole, that whole Eminem thing is just like. It was disappointing. I think we both agree on that. It's disappointing. One, they only, people only have it up because he white. (laughs) And he talking about oppression and and all that kind of thing. And and he was extreme. But uh, yeah. Okay. What was the line? Racism is the only thing he's fantastic for or something like that. Like and then he makes <clears> some <throat> reference to the thing and with yeah, the orange, the orange and, and whatnot. And it's like all right, all right. Um. I find he was trying way too hard to sell certain lines, you like see, lines ex- that you see, he thought exactly. was like super hard or super exactly. dope. That was like it was okay. I feel like the delivery for them it was just. <clears throat> <laughs> you, know, you know what you know what's sad it just fell off like it it, it make i went from watching that freestyle i went from war eminem to like all right white boy <laughs> cool you see what you guys say do you think yeah it was okay and, and people like, like that's yeah okay. he's doing it for the culture and he's doing it oh shit and he's doing it for um yeah it's representing of black people and this and this and that and it's like all right cool <laughs> but and <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> I don't know, but again, something else that mm-hmm. really hyped up on mm-hmm. social media that I've been hyping up myself because I can't wait is that mm-hmm. Black Panther movie. You see that trailer? I know you see the trailer. Can I just show you the trailer. <laughs> you see that properly, that yo, <laughs> yo, that thing looks heck. It's 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 interesting. <clears throat> like the one thing that the, the one comment I would say about the trailer is like. The one negative thing that I would say about the trailer is like the trailer felt super long in a you sense. Find so? I mean <clears throat> it took long before it felt as though I was learning anything. Because I, I this was the first black part. I, I wasn't really like I don't really follow movies that much because like I figure whenever they're online and stuff, you know, I'm not promoting illegal activity or nothing like yeah. that. But <laughs> <laughs> it just happens. And I'm like, why would I spend money and go places when I don't have to spend money and go places? I can just mm. remain in the comfort of my own home no, and watch but, stuff online. But normally, normally <laughs> I feel you with that. But that is a movie. Like, like I was telling you when we was when we before we started. I recording. might actually might, but I probably a, not. St- we have a friend. We have a mutual friend. Mm. This man posts up on Facebook, but oh yeah, he will go and buy that shiki and go watch the movie. I might just indulge in that stupidity for, for that move. For that movie, it feels appropriate. I just, like, I just might. I, I would never wear the shiki again in my life. I wouldn't. I wouldn't knock you for that. But I mean. Yeah, in in those circumstances, in a certain, I wouldn't knock you for that. I mean, I, I would say you probably could wear the shiki, maybe just, work it into certain other things. Yeah, what I mean, you're a black but, one. <clears throat> you go in. I'll try to get the shoes and everything. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Well, well, what are what are the shoes? I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I I don't I don't know. <laughs> I I assume they have shoes. I hope, and not just like bare feet. 
but yeah, basically the point I was making though with the with, with the um trailer, I feel like it took a long time before like they were showing a lot of pretty things and fight scenes and explosions and stuff and I feel like that was just typical, the movie for? like typical movie that like It's a Marvel movie, what more you expected? Listen. I expect more. What what I'm yo, just saying, li- but you will li- but, but listen, li- but listen, you mean, up to now I start making this statement like twice now. Up to now you let me finish the statement before you <laughs> propose your half your rebuttal. The state the point all the point I'm making is it was like a reasonably long that um trailer, but in like the first minute of in a half it's just the holiday explosion and stuff and then they start talking and actually saying okay what is going to be the plot of this movie what is going to be happening why oh, am okay, i watching okay, this okay, movie okay, 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 that was okay. the only negative um comment i was bringing like the special effects and the explosion all that, that looks dope and it looks good the fight scenes that it showed a little bit of combat and stuff the suit and all of what it was doing and <clears throat> that the lighting up and the glowing and whatnot look, like Ill. the fact that the to me the interesting part started when they started exploring the story and i was like okay cool and then the end when he mentioned the whole oh they was looking for el dorado thinking it was somewhere in south america but Maybe it's secretly in africa and thing like that concept and saying that that's what what kind of the place that they explore and stuff like that like all of that to me was like the interesting stuff when they started going there i was like okay now it provides context to all of this explosion and because I honestly I am not that deep in comics. I never read any of the actual yeah, comics on any of, from I mean, any of these superhero franchises. I never read any of the comics. I know I never read any of the comics, but I follow some of the some of the stories. The series more than and others. different things. Yeah, I, I'm I'm interested in them or whatever, but I never. I don't know the source material that they're pulling from, yeah, so yeah, I don't no, know no, I all that much about the world and the inner workings of what's going on in the Black Panther, who his enemies is, and okay, what know, drives Black, him, and all no, of these Black things. Black Panther, like, I, I can find out now with the movie, too. So I, yeah, I don't know so <laughs> that's what I was looking for in the trailer and thing, and it took a little bit before so some yeah. of that context and stuff started to be provided, so it looks interesting based on what they was discussing and things. So like, but I find, yo, all black cars, practically... Because obviously, yeah, then they showed the white, white dude, yeah. like for, for a good bit of it, you know, it was only black people you see, and then the white dude out to the okay, car shooting a gun or something predominantly like that. Predominantly white cars, predominantly black cars, you mean? Sorry. Yes, yes, black cars. <clears throat> that definitely is a good look, and it seems as though, like, there, there's a proper budget, they took the proper time to produce it, and it there's don't a look like the dog in Africa. Yeah, they're like uh, finally something like bigging up the country that making it look like one of those 1 800 save the children commercials. <laughs> But that, honestly, though, that, that's what Hollywood is put to Africa to be. The thing that I appreciate, like I was saying, is that it it seems as though it was handled correctly in a sense because much like a hidden figures are those type of movies, like they try to say that these are kind of precedent setting or like benchmark type of movies for the type of movie that hidden figures was. If it didn't do well, it could have a, um, it could be detrimental on any other movies with a similar storyline, a similar plot mm-hmm. line as maybe like three leading, three Af- like African American leading females and thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I low down broke records or whatever and yeah, was like yeah, turned out yeah. to be a tremendous success and thing which is good to encourage more things maybe that had something to do with the fact that this was the Black Panther thing was it seems as though it was properly handled you know because it could have been a situation where they wasn't advertised because not everything from Marvel I mean is guaranteed yeah. success they've had some failures I in mean, their the, track record <clears throat> which, which movie you would consider a failure from them which, which super, are you talking top, about uh, you talking about a superhero movie in general or yeah, I mean, not, 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 not all of them have been good. I mean, D- DC was the other one that was like. Yeah, but but D- when I think of superhero movies, I know DC has one that was just ridiculous. I mean, which one now? Batman versus Superman. That was DC, right? Account to me, Justice League, this, D- Justice yeah, League, yeah, and DC, all of them. This DC, DC account to me, Flash, the yeah, yeah, whole yeah, them yeah. peoples, and like. Yo. Like really, that Batman vs Superman. Like, listen to the name of that movie. Why would I want to watch a human fight this dude from another planet because with all kind of not, superpowers? That's the Man of Steel. He's not just a normal human. He's one of the smart. A he's dude a, with money and gadgets that you can show at the Man yo, of Steel. He's extremely. Ri- he's extremely rich and he's get extremely seri- smart. Get serious, dog. Okay. <clears throat> and, that's wh- and that's why he used his so money to, so, so to bring this into Naruto terms he's going to oh, put Shik- Shikamaru wait, 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 he's no, 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 going to put no, no, Shikamaru no, no, against no, 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 what no, the Hokage no. of, of no, no. what because he's smart and tactical and shit like what you, no, first of all you can't compare Naruto and Batman and Superman we can take this second of all you can't 
can't complain. You can't use Shikamaru as an example either but because he's he just lazy as he, fuck. But he's Batman, a smart, tactical person. He, that's the he, when he has to be. I feel it was that that's the closest Naruto equivalent to a Batman type but of character that, based on see, that the brings, tactical that, intelligence that and the back, element. Like, that brings back point number one. You cannot compare Batman and <laughs> Superman to fucking Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> this is all no, I'm saying. Superman needed to get it was a ridiculous cut, concept. Okay? And Ben no. Affleck, you are not the real <laughs> Batman. I'm sorry. Okay, we I, need Christian Bale doing his ridiculous voice and thing. <laughs> he is the only Batman we accept. But Ben, but ben Affleck was doing the voice too. It don't work. <laughs> it's not the same thing, okay? That panel who was fighting the Joker, you know, I repeat to the Joker. Like, See, that's, it's that's unfo- the Batman it's, it's we unfortunate, accept. It's unfortunate we can't bring back that Joker because but yeah, that was that the was best the Joker bat- yeah. that ever existed. Yep. Like, I ain't gonna lie, no. You gotta shout out that performance. I ain't gonna lie, no. The Jack Nicholson wasn't a bad one in like the original back in the day 19 yeah I, I, my, my memory don't work that far okay well you like, see I, 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 I like Batman history fa- but I'm a Batman fan so I used to watch all those, man, all those the, movies the real one started from when he had that Christian Bale guy <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> That's well, that was the first one. No, that, yes. that, that, that was the first Batman. I look, saw the ones with Mr. Freeze, Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger, and stuff yeah, back mean, in the day. Okay, like, it was Carnival, but <laughs> I mean, it was Batman. Jack. Batman's a shit, okay? Poison Ivy and the Bane that they had from back then. Batman, like, how I ridiculous they were looking. Poison, poison Ivy and shit when I was small. Black I mean. Panther. So, uh, uh, other than you being hype about it, I mean, you have any more commentary about, like, but, no, I just want what to you're it. seeing? <clears throat> but I just, I, just, I just like it in general. It. it I like the fact that it's obviously again um predominantly black cast mm-hmm. and it's actually about a black partner and it not only a black partner but somebody from it Africa. Justice. Yeah, it, it it not portraying Africa to be some some desolate wasteland like how you just normally see it in Hollywood. I don't mm-hmm. think we see this already. And that I mean and it's a whole bunch of action, people fighting and blowing up and technology and shit. So, I mean, it was not to like. <laughs> this, the whole sci-fi element, like, that, that it was kind of unexpected. Like, all this super future-looking, futuristic-looking technology and stuff. Like, I, I really didn't know what the world of Wakanda and what the universe of Black Panther is supposed to be like and what's the backstory, like but I it, said. It's, Wakanda but is supposed to be, like, the panel like, like, in the trailer, like, the, like um, El Dorado. So mm-hmm. it's supposed to be one of these hidden, one of the most technologically advanced places in Africa. Yeah, in from the, the trailer, they, it, from the trailer, it seems I mean, that way. I'm like, pretty sure if we go watch the movie, we can get a, like a rundown of what good. Well, right. yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> I mean, it, it, if if I didn't get that from the movie, I'd be like, well, why was I here? Like, what was the, <laughs> what did I come here for? I think that's what movie's supposed to do. <laughs> oh shit! But now, nah, boy, but is. I I read I hype for it even though mm. it's, it's next year. Bye. Twenty eighteen. Well, February. Beginning? No. I think it's I. If I'm mistaken, it's supposed to be February. Uh, uh, the beginning. trailer just said twenty eighteen. Unless maybe I wasn't paying attention and I missed but the. If, but I'm pretty <clears throat> sure it's the beginning. I don't know exactly when. I want to say February, but I could be wrong. Mm. But it's supposed to be the beginning of twenty eighteen. True. And that's only like three months now. But yeah, time's October flying. October almost done. Time's flying. You're right. Point is, next week is Halloween. The will come in soon. But <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you gotta count important holidays, you know. Like there, there, there's important days that you gotta keep track the of. The say holiday. Listen, it may as well be celebrated as one for students. That yeah, and that's how you get in trouble at the end of the month. You end up spending all your money before but, you <laughs> budgeting. That that's the key to life. Budgeting. You see, that's why you have to end up thinking. That's why you have to get a job, guy. Well, I mean, we, you yeah, know, you know, you know, working in thing with great. I mean, in, whether you have a job or regardless, of that, there's many people that come into ridiculous amounts of money and they end up being broke again because but, they wasn't budgeting right. But that's true. Regardless, of, well, no, no matter what situation you're in, rich people get rich because they budget. That, like, that's true. Whatever company you're running, you got to keep track of. You got to do inventory, keep track of profits or whatever it is. So all of that is farms of budgeting. No, okay, <clears throat> okay let, let me not get in finance mm-hmm. that's, that's maths but, mathematics but, but I mean in, okay yeah it's maths and almost what that, that's 50% of life I mean you gotta be at least at least a mm-hmm. simple maths I mean you can't escape it no matter what but I mean you gotta keep track of how much money you're making you gotta at least know the important maths well I mean mm-hmm. if, if you want to get ahead at least yeah I mean or, I think that's most of our goal I'll, 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 at least I'd hope so if not then I don't know I was just gonna say no, everybody Everybody seems to got their own priorities. Not goals, from, from priorities. Yeah, all all that you know, personal shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
What, what, what was the what, what's next on our list of topics that we had up for discussion today? I had a couple of things you Boy. know I mentioned. You know? So <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to back Black Panther sufficiently. You know? <laughs> if er- anyone been listening the past couple of episodes, we've been you know talking about the pa- um, obviously Hurricane Emma hit the islands and whatnot, and you know mm. Saint Martin getting up there and, and um, how to say we covering we slowly but surely we getting their airport open or back up and stuff like that. With mm-hmm. that being said now, it seems that there's a petition going around of no confidence of the current government, if I'm mistaken. So what that means, because I'm sure I did not explain that correctly. So what that actually means is there's a petition going around for people to sign the fact that they don't have no more confidence in the current government and they want them out. And But I don't know if that actually means re-election or... Opposition goes in. I don't know. I didn't really look into it that much because it's always some bullshit. Yeah, <coughs> but yeah, like, I see that going around. So I find out it's interesting. I, I I've seen some um speculation and stuff like regarding government falling and stuff like that due to the way the situations and things been handling. And I feel like I feel like I've discussed it with some other people and thing and. I feel like the one thing that most of us agree on, or at least most of the people that I've discussed with, is the last thing that we need right now in this current situation is government falling. I know we may have our critiques and criticisms of the way certain things was handled, <clears throat> but in a moment of like instability and potential crisis and stuff like that, if you want to call it that, I feel like, well, I, f- I feel like it's safe to call it a crisis, however. At least the now we kind of, like Kana said, stable we stabilize slowly stabilizing and you know getting the handle on things again but either way i feel like instability for that like there's something like that government falling would just cause more instability and that's something that we don't need but like i don't know i haven't looked too deeply into the situation of the about the vote or confidence in particular but i mean i know many criticisms that people were bringing across and I understand where it come from, from things like the border situation, the closing of the borders, which like... <clears throat> but, okay, you see, my whole thing with that is if you want to criticize, okay, because the whole thing is about mainly about the PM, so the, um, mm-hmm. the Prime Minister. Yeah. All right, cool. You can say what you want about the Prime Minister, whether you agree with whatever actions he take or not. If you really about this whole make Saint Martin great again, yeah, we're gonna come back as a country, we're gonna bounce back. He is a Saint Martin as well, so you can't be bringing personal. I remember I, hearing <clears> something <throat> that he was born on Curacao or something like that. Though, but, Yo, the man, yeah. he, he couldn't have been a prime minister if he wasn't here for at least umpteen amount of times. I mean, amount of years mm-hmm. and here, I mean, as in Saint Martin. Yeah, I don't know the specific regulations and requirements sh- after, I'm, but they, I know there's a certain amount I'm, of years. Exactly, and blah, I'm blah, pretty blah. sure yeah. something like that. Either way, <laughs> the man is still a Saint Martin or judge. So bringing personal things into it, into the conversation at all, or as an argument, to me, I sh- it shouldn't be judged, especially if it's to bring down this man. Cool. If you have beef with what, he, what he's saying or what he's doing, cool. Talk about that. But leave it about the job. Leave it about how he ruined the country. Don't bring. Don't use personal um, examples into why he he should be removed or kicked out the island or or all this type of crap that people. But what could say. I, well, what do you consider a personal attack though? By like bringing a man kids into it, but oh yeah, the, the children doing this and he's probably doing this for the kids and then all kind of stupidness that I was like, what, what what the hell, man? I, with that, I could agree with, but the one example I just mentioned that was something that, at least as far as I know to this day, there wasn't necessarily too much clarification on. But like I said, with the border situation that people bringing up and thing, that's something mm-hmm. that was mentioned in some of the parliamentary parliamentary meetings. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I, and I, that's I, something I, that people I, blaming the um, prime minister on as part of, or at least that's. For some people, that seems to be part of where I believe the vote and the confidence thing would come from or stem from. <clears throat> yeah, something. I mean, I would think so too. I mean, again, and I, that's not a personal attack. I, that's something that was potentially unconstitutional no. that goes against treaties that was established in like the inception of the island and things. I ain't sitting up here and defending what a man doing or what he did. I like, just saying, don't bring personal. Just don't bring the man personal crap into the the, the argument. I I find that's irrelevant. 
I, I agree with you. Like I said, that point, if you train a Gladys children or whatever, anything like that, that is unnecessary. I would agree with you there. I'm here trying to see if I could find the, the, the actual treaty and thing like that just because, you know, fun yeah. facts and stuff, you know. Why not include them but into the podcast, I've, educate people a little bit. You know, we, we <clears throat> try to bring some informative news. But um, I, I don't know. That I guess that's just me. I'm curious to see how far they're going to push it and how many signatures they're going to get. And if they do get however many signatures they're aiming for, what's going to happen is if the opposition going to take Control or the opposition can't even take control because the opposition is who? Ock? I don't know. <clears throat> and if it's up, I, sh- I, I and, should know these things, and but I if, don't. And okay, well, if the opposition is up, if I'm mistaken, they're going to do war because the first, like, two people, two first two, three people on the list can't pass screening. <laughs> so they can't be in government anyway. So so what does that leave the people with? What gonna happen? If somebody listening to this want to feel free to Compton comment and, and, answers and leave stuff us like know <clears throat> what, what going on because I sure as hell don't. <laughs> but yeah, what, so what gonna happen then? Like, so it's like go, it'll be more instability, it, unnecessary instability, if you ask me. But I mean, I curious. I really curious to see <clears throat> what gonna happen because. <laughs> like I, like I've said before, I, I feel as though it's not a like I agree with um certain discussions that I've had with people before off air or whatever is like I feel like the border situation isn't necessarily a priority. Like I would agree to that, but I feel like it's <clears throat> I feel like it's just something that in a democracy shouldn't necessarily be the case that there's this lack of transparency. Just if um the wrong decision has been made. There's nothing wrong with saying that, okay, I made a wrong decision and stuff like that. It's Maybe we might understand the ideas if we actually get a clear understanding proper explanation of, of, of what, what happened. What the reasons, for, like the, maybe <clears throat> we understand not the ideas, but the reason behind the bottom. It might be, I mean, it's tense that he do it, period, that it happened, period. But We're again, supposed to be the friendly island. But, like, as, but, I've, as I've learned, I feel like I need to throw this in, you know, as I've learned come, recently. Come, come, drop it, drop it, drop it. <laughs> Like we we actually gained the title Friendly Island from when the Treaty of Concordia was signed in sixteen forty eight. Or no wait. Let me see if <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought you had it. I thought you had it. I you had was the going good. somewhere like right sixteen forty eight. Yes, yes. It was indeed sixteen forty eight. I had it going I had it going. But anyway, just it basically signifies the unity of Dutch St. Martin and Friend St. Martin as two separate countries on one tiny little island and that we should be friendly with our neighbors and stuff like that because the history of Samaritan was very tumultuous and the island changed owners if you want to call it that quite a couple times before it finally came to just be split between the Dutch and the French and they agreed to you know live there harmoniously and all of that and all of that I feel like all of that is why the border situation is potentially such a big issue because it like goes against things that were like part of the founding elements of the island, that friendly cooperation between the two sides. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but at the same time, I can't, to a certain extent, I understand the politics because look, the French separately send their troops, the Dutch separately send their troops. Mm-hmm. And that's just how it is. The French side is is governed and under France. The mm-hmm. Dutch side under all of that. All of that. So that's, like, that's not the problem. Is, yeah, but <coughs> but that's the thing. That is the problem because according to, I won't, I, I can't say it. I want to say this, but I don't know how to introduce it because it's not. I don't know if it's true or not. Mm-hmm. So yeah, don't quote me on this. Mm-hmm. But according to what I've been hearing from reliable sources, mm. there's particular reason why the borders was closed like that. And it was not just the PM. It's actually coming from higher up. Mm-hmm. So that's something they wanted to do to control the, the fucking shit on the French side. To keep the crazy on the French side. Listen, listen, listen. All, like, to me... So... Like, the main thing, the, uh, the main point for me is, like, they need just... There just needs to be transparency on the situation. Yeah, I if agree it, if it wasn't, if it, Like, 
I feel like it's something that it shouldn't be. It should. It really shouldn't take that long to investigate when you look at all the people involved. There's not that many people that could have that. In my opinion, would have the authority to give such commands or whatever and thing. So to me, if there's some questions being asked to these people or whatever, whatever, whoever. Um, whatever, whoever has a jurisdiction or whatever to perform some form of investigation, just be like, okay, ask these people, said, said these people long, ask them some questions, get it and reckon and be like, okay, who, are, who said what? And they just give the explanation as to what led to the decision. If depending on the explanation they give, the reasoning and stuff like that, maybe it's justifiable, maybe it's not. But if it's just all the rumors and speculations there. and things, yeah, they just got to set the record straight for whatever, for like... <clears throat> That make it even worse. The whole rumors and this yeah. one saying this one, and the thing is, people I just want to know what happened. Hap- I just want to know what happened. Yeah, like that's that's my main thing, I, and I, I feel agree. like it shouldn't be something that no, a month later, however long it's been since it um that since Irma hitting stuff that month, we even month. still having this discussion because I feel like it should have been something that like you just cleared up, just be like, okay, this is what it was, and maybe it was a bad call, I whatever. Know, we may- pass it now anyway, so I mean, it's not like. But just to set the record straight and thing. Yeah, but I mean, I would, I would, <coughs> yo, I don't know, but it's a Martin. I, I've been surprised many times this year, like I said on this podcast before. <laughs> I, I just waiting to see what gonna happen next because God, God knows. But think you, s- what something I just think about there. Since Emma hit right, and mm. everybody there thinking about like you know the rebuild next like, time and 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 you know we trying to get back to place how it was what about what about, have you heard anything about a whole pearl of china thing since then not really I, honestly nah like because other than the original you hear how belly how belly was or how it like if any there was any like significant <laughs> let's try that again significant beach erosion or like anything like that because that's where the hotel was supposed well, to go. That might prompt them to be like, okay, the the, the, the location ain't necessarily looking yeah. ideal anymore, so they yeah, might not want to, to come out. and continue yeah, doing exactly. it or whatever. No, that's an you interesting think they, question. That's you think something. they would pull out? Because like, they, cause now they have, to consi- they have to really reconsider the whole construction fact. They can't just come and bring cheap steel and, 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 and do things piece by piece. I mean, halfway fuck up job and, and, and yeah, think that but, I mean, it going to stand to something that like Irma I don't and know I don't think that's gonna be the last Irma I mean we're not gonna see the last of Irma yeah I, I get what you're saying I don't know if this might seem like ignorant state but I know um, Japan receives earthquakes I don't know if China is affected by earthquakes uh, as well I wouldn't be surprised I, I know China is a, it, I know China is a huge landmass mm-hmm. it's like a pre it covers a decent span of land so I could uh, imagine that certain parts may be affected by earthquakes or not but either way I feel like Chinese engineers or whatever I think that they're competent or i would i would like to think yeah but that they'll be competent enough in yeah but still knowing that you gotta um certain places like i just feel that's yes, basically but you see, but again yeah the i, I whether they may you mean, want though. to do it or but not no, it's not even that no it's not even that the uh, the responsibility also lies on Samaritan government Mm. To hold them accountable to, to build them standards regula- and, to build mm. them regulations, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we, I mean, if we have to go off of the history, that's not going to go so well. You know, like thinking about like from the last podcast and stuff when you were, from the conversation with CD, like that was one thing that I agree with him with on a lot. Like the point that he was making about, um, we need to do what we do and do it well. So like with the enforcement, are uh, enforcing. Just basically stepping up checks and balances and stuff and enforcing certain things and like because there's a lot of laws and different things that are in place they just not enforce all the time yeah but you see does does like i think I, I don't know if i had said this last time or not but that's difficult because they have a lot of people that are gonna hurt that like enforcing those things is all well and fine but they're gonna have honest they're gonna, they're gonna have legit cases where people just not going to be able to build that way so, like, what are you going to do with those people? Yeah, I understand that. But, I mean, that's more talking about, like, the average Joe type of situation. But now when you're talking about an entire company, like, I mean, uh, if it's the Chinese government directly who's in charge of this, I don't know who, ex- who specifically oh, is. Oh, you're talking about, like, the whole hotel and, like, the whole yeah, thing. Like, okay, okay, that, okay, okay, okay. To okay, enforce okay. regulations and that, I mean, come on. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel what you mean. But, I mean... They got the but, money. They, but they that, got see, the money to pay whatever. See, and it's like, not 
that well as the thing. We don't know where they got the money, but where the money actually going for? Is it to get paid off so they don't have to build, they don't have to use the expensive material, and they don't have to build the expensive way so they could get away with shit like that? Or is the money going to... You bring up, you bring up valid points. You, you bring see? up valid points. So it's like, that. I guess that is my part of my like thought process of like what go, what gonna happen with this whole proletarian thing now that you know her Irma just come and fuck up the whole place well maybe they pull out I don't like I really don't got those answers but it's interesting like the whole proletarian thing is an interesting at least what I think symptom of um a video that I showed Kana off air right before we started taping and stuff yo it was something interesting that I came across about like future projects from now from 2017 to 2050 and one of the segments that they did was on china and they were talking about this one belt one i don't remember it's one road one belt or one belt one road one but way one one way one road some in some, any case it's, uh, it's some a combination of road. one <laughs> belt and one road and it's um the project was announced at least in 2013 and it the whole plan is basically to connect all kind of um Connect China to the blood cloud world. Yeah, basically. Pra- to well, summarize, that's and basically what it does. At least from, from Europe going eastward. The name in it, it, it's supposed to be like the modern day Silk Road thing. Looking back to um, Chinese history from when the Silk Road was introduced. I mean, from when the Silk Road was prevalent, uh, re- relevant then. Mm-hmm. It's something that allowed a lot of trade from on Camelbacks or whatever from China to different parts of the world. And they kind of using that same type of I- idea or mindset to build a bunch of to fund a bunch of infrastructure projects in all kind of countries from um doing real building railways and roads and train systems all kind of stuff it has infrastructure related to help um commerce between whatever country Developing it may be and china and but you see and that's the thing they already practically got western european europe unlocked because what mm-hmm. they they got a road from they got either road or trains that go directly from China to already 15 European countries. London mm-hmm. was just included in that list not too long ago. Like and that and that's just here. They got they got um other other investments in Pakistan. They got investments in Australia. They got investments in Africa. Yep. I think they just built a, a railway from Somalia, some some one of the cities in Somalia, to some place in China, direct. Yep. Yo. It's a crazy concept and what all they're doing, the amount of money that they're throwing around into these projects, the just billions and billions Yo. and like I think this is gonna be the first time I say it on this podcast, but I've been saying this for years. These Asian people are going to take over the world and China is a clear a clear example of that fuck. Because you know what that's going to be? You know, you know, okay, this is what I think it is. You don't realize, especially like what we see in the video, like I'm what he had said that previously, they, they're focusing on infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So they're focusing on, on connecting China to the rest of the world. So you know what I going to mean? They're going to start kicking the fucking people out and be like, look, eh, you go there, you can't go over there, we're going to take over over there. Bam, you go like, over there, we're going to handle over there. Like, Yo, this is how it take over the start, you know? That, that was another thing that they touched on in the video itself, where they were saying, they, they just mentioned it subtly here, he didn't really like, um, focus on it but the fact that most of these infrastructure projects was carried out by chinese engineers and chinese workers and thing which basically means that yes you get the favor of getting a new hospital built or a new railway or whatever it may be and then we just go come and unload with people no but uh, but the point (laughs) i was making is that this is something that does nothing for the country in a sense because is like the Chinese, yep. they're just sending their own people. They're getting paid as Chinese companies and everything to handle it. So it's not to say that the actual company's economy helped in Kaisa. Or at using least in certain, local work or local, yeah, local you know. The people ain't giving them, providing the, no jobs and none to the it's actual Chinese place. Chinese material, it's Chinese workers, it's, yeah. chi- it's, it's things. So I it's, saw that that was some of the criticism and stuff. Kade was receiving some slight pushback from certain African nations that they already have some investments in and stuff. Kade was seeing that, yeah, they signed the deal, they got these things, but it was actually looking at how did it really help the country itself? Because like, yeah, but it, not, but not only that, not only did it not help, some of the shit was some of the the, the work done was shit jobs. Hmm. Some of the infrastructure side crumbling a couple hmm. years after being done when it was supposedly at least. T- three two to uh, you not exaggerate at least a couple of decades hmm. without maintenance 
and and that and yo that is something really like the Caribbean need to consider because again, China looking to make that move in the Caribbean. They don't start yeah, taking really. over some some and places. I, I know Jamaica done that some more. Like the influence they get more and more got, serious. And yep, thing. they got a lot. The Chinese investing heavy in Jamaica <laughs> that I know of. Um, and now this whole thing with Saint Martin, Saint Martin really need to yo. It's like now we gotta look out for the Dutch and the Chinese. <laughs> it's like which well, I mean, it's which fun. one will take over? Who you? Are? <laughs> this this might be a little tense way to um phrase this mm. but from how i seen it right now it's kind of like who the government gonna sell us out to for <laughs> there's some foreign influence like and who, but, but who, who is it going to be the highest bidder like most probably honestly though like that's something that i've been thinking about a lot that had me like reevaluating some of my views on some Martin <laughs> regarding pol- um politics and stuff but just understanding how like tourism fits into Saint Martin's history of like, at least from what all of what I was reading, then like they gave some details on like how Saint Martin went from the different things that Saint Martin used to produce during when slavery was a thing and stuff, the different agricultural stuff and how um, once slavery was abolished, it didn't become as profitable and that played a part. How they were from like coffee, tobacco, sh- um, sugar, all of these different things that Saint Martin produced. Too. Yeah, salt is the obvious one. I mean, from Swaliga, like the name came from the Arawaks, I believe yeah, I mean, it was. For the people that don't know. And they call it, the Swaliga was a land of salt and thing. But I mean, the salt is the obvious one that I feel like most people know, but I, but I wasn't aware that coffee and all of these things was produced oh, yeah, on Samatan at I some point in time. But apparently they were, and it just, um, certain things, they had a lot of factors so and things that let so them you, stop you, being profitable. You, but you, I just kind of understand more of the way Samatan fits in in the world and at least like the way St. Martin was dealt with and like it's a small island with minimal resources and it was only of benefit only when there was something to be extracted from there because like at least based on the way the history tells it is like St. Martin was only popping when it could have produced something for the Dutch and when it stopped being they stopped caring as much and Don't really looked like much changed no it just happened that we get into this tourism economy and we got like night white sandy beaches and stuff and that's the new thing that's that we can shit. sell and and it's not necessarily wrong because i mean like yo you gotta use what you have we don't have none of those things no more. We don't have the land to be growing agricultural and, and be thinking yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, kind of like, all of that stuff that we talked about last last week on the podcast regarding the alternatives and stuff that they have to, um, yeah, the alternatives and stuff that they have to, ver- like, the vertical gardening and all of those type of things or rooftop gardens. If you got minimal space, you could grow in other ways. But, like, I don't know. I forgot the point I was making. <laughs> but my my whole point is, I look, I pay attention. To so what's going I best China. start, you know, big ups to the boy them screw, the man them screw. Hmm. I best start um, learning Mandarin. <laughs> start getting on this Chinese vibe. I'm not going to do it because they, I just don't think like that. But I got another job. I got another Asian country I go to, you know, hide in. So, I feel my, like that was, a, that, that was a random show though, though. I don't understand because, how that was relevant screw to school. Because Jan- Mandarin. Oh, true. I, oh, I wasn't aware. Or maybe I was, but I forgot. Like, yeah. Okay, no, ma- it don't make that, more sense. That's, that's why. But I wasn't I, seeing I thought, the connection. Oh, okay, cool, oh, cool. Oh, God, okay. So, yeah. But, yeah, get on this thing because they're going to take over. <laughs> and it's slowly happening. Watch I mean, it. I'm calling it now. The way it's going, like... I, Especially after watching that and hearing of, like some more the details about a one belt, one road, a one road, one belt project yeah, even, and thing. I know there was like investing heavy, but I didn't even know that either. But that's crazy. Yeah, I feel Especially like that just solidified and confirmed everything regarding like yo, China really going for this world domination thing. Like it, it is a serious oh, goal, and they oh, look into like they're on the verge of achieving it okay, potentially so in we, the near future. <clears throat> we kind of going over. Whoa. Our intended time, yeah, yeah. Our intended what we time. was expected and hoping for. But I want, but not, I want make anyway. this, I want make this last point. Mm-hmm. Suppose the real Illuminati is the Chinese. What? Like, so what? Take a think about it. Because there's one. They, this they're doing. If they if they get to do what we get, what we say they do, they're going to do, and actually do this one world order domination thing. Is a communist country. It's going to be, or if that happened, it would be a one world order. So suppose the actual Illuminati is secretly the Chinese. And all this is just a plan. It is a part of the plan. 
it wasn't like how do I answer this question? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like how do I intelligently answer this question? Like no vibe. Okay, if what we believe the Illuminati to be, to be being like the world leaders, the political and business elite that somehow behind behind the scenes pulling strings and dictating the way the world goes, and the goal is world domination, that was centralized government and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. If mm-hmm. that's the conspiracy we're going with. Mm-hmm. To Tell me, me how the Chinese can't don't fit me, that description. To me, to say the Chinese, I feel like that's a ridiculous statement, first of all. <laughs> like, just flat out, the Chinese are the... Like, okay. which ones? Like, which ones? <laughs> <laughs> like, all, like, three billion or however much Chinese people they have, like, are all of them Illuminati? Are like, what? Like, I, I know what it is you're trying to say, but you mean it just got to be technical. <laughs> For me, All right. like let, I let think, me, it, 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 if that's the conspiracy, how we how we go, Chinese would have certain Chinese figures would have to be part of that. If it's like world, like the amount of influence okay, that China has on the world, me, me and the Illuminati really trying to control the world and form one world government and stuff, there gotta be some most kind of, of Chinese. So, like, what I mean, most of them is Chinese. I mean, like. So it's so the they, Illuminati they, is supposed to be a group. They're the top. Like it, it, let's yeah. say they got board members and thing, they got a majority shares, yeah, majority power yeah, and thing on the board. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's like a hundred of them, at least forty is Chinese, <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, but they're not okay. Man. At least forty is Chinese. And it depends on how you divide that amongst like all the other nations that might be a minority, but I don't know how much power no, a lot no, of people because, out there. Like if okay, if hundred forty let's let, let's but, just say like two is African. Let's I say, feel, let's say about if, like if that kind 12, of ratio that you're about going twelve for. is European and like the rest is American. Let's I've, be real. And okay, maybe like a four, five Russians, Saudis, a okay. couple Russians. Okay, like they gotta have a decent amount of okay, Russians. Yeah, that, that's true, man. We might like, have to reschedule. I mean, we count. Yeah, 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 we count that whole distribution. But I, I, I get what I get. What you say in that manner. But because dog and look. China, I mean, okay, is is obviously because they have the most people in the world, but China also has the most billionaires and the most billionaires in the world. Again, they do? yeah, again, True. granted, that's just because they have a bigger population. Yeah, and percentage wise, I don't know how much different it is, you know, I got, in different countries. I gotta go get a Chinese friend. <laughs> Say so I at least have somebody to practice Mandarin and thing. Get, yeah, get, get proper command yeah, of the yeah. language and thing. I mean, you, honest, you gotta understand the new overlords, you know. <laughs> No, no, you see, you see, I don't go by the cousin. I don't go and slide in there with the Japanese and mm-hmm. be like, and you know, just 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 pretend that they don't see me. Yeah, but, like but, the, the, but, the, the, but, the cat amongst penguins. I, I, but <laughs> is your goal not to hide? I'm confused. Like, Yo, no, but you see, they go, you see, the thing is, they they're a little bit too they're a little bit too serious, especially if it's a Chinese that gonna take over and be number one. Mm. So they gonna want everybody to be like them. So in the first couple of years, you gonna have to hide and blend in before you can really come out yeah, and establish yourself. But you a black dude going yeah. blending in Japan, dog? <laughs> like the analogy that you gave about penguins <laughs> blending in with cats, that's a perfect description of the situation. <laughs> but I don't understand how that's supposed to illustrate or indicate to me that it's an effective hiding <laughs> tactic. Which part of a black dude hiding in Japan sounds to you like because, that's the definition of incognito, dog? Because I could give the warning signals to other people when shit going down because of, by the time that I won't be able to understand and decipher mm-hmm. the language. And I, that's why I believe the Which Chinese... means you can be the first to go, basically. Can you over, you're actually over there on that side of the world and think you can be... Like, no, but you see, they can bomb themselves unless the American come. And before they come, they're going to have the one inside. But China they ain't still beefing with North Korea. They, 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 they still ain't got yeah. tensions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but shit, no, shit ain't going to pop on by. Yeah, exactly. Like, you don't know these things, though. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Well, you, you got a view into the future, like you got magic watch, eight ball. I'll come back. I'll come back to you with that one. But <laughs> with that being said, everybody, again, thanks for listening to this a little bit extended episode. Uh, yeah, man. I want in a couple of minutes. That's not man. This yeah. is normal for us. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Again, episode, thank you for listening to episode ten. Don't forget to like, share, comment, leave us thing, uh, leave us know. <laughs> what you think yes, um, yes. if you have any other topics you'd like us to discuss if you have any specific um, guests you'd like us to come on and interview and get their opinions on whatever mm-hmm. let us know hit us up on the link up Facebook or the link up podcast on YouTube 
Or you can hit us up personally on um, our social medias, Facebook, yeah, IG, I mean, Twitter, for I this think, guy. I, I think, don't really use it, but whatever. Yeah, I don't use Twitter either, but I think anybody who really listening right now, they know how to get they in touch They know how to get in touch with us. We're not hard to find. So, yeah. Again, thank you for listening. And, and with, that, with that, we'll see you the next time we link up. Hey, we're getting there. Smooth yeah, catchphrase, yeah, now. Yeah, we, we got this thing done. We got this thing done. Bless yeah, people. <laughs> Don't know. Later. <laughs>